How long would it take us to reach Jupiter's moons? It sounds like a simple question, but the answer shows just how enormous the solar system is and how far we still are from fully mastering interplanetary travel. If getting to Mars already demands months in transit, imagine crossing hundreds of millions of kilometers to the largest planet in the solar system. There, orbiting that gas giant, are some of the most fascinating places ever found. Jupiter's moons, worlds coated in ice, riddled with volcanoes, and maybe even hiding oceans where life could exist. But before we dream about landings or exploration, we need to understand one essential detail. How long would it take a crew to get there? Jupiter is the fifth planet from the Sun, sitting at an average distance of about 778 million kilometers from our star. That distance, of course, changes as Earth and Jupiter move in their orbits. When the two planets are closest, the gap can drop to around 588 million kilometers. When they're on opposite sides of the Sun, it stretches to 968 million. On average, a ray of light, traveling at the absurd speed of nearly 300,000 kilometers per second, takes about 43 minutes to go from the Sun to Jupiter. That alone gives you a sense of the scale we're dealing with. While Mars is right there, a cosmic walk of a few months, Jupiter is a giant leap further out. But Jupiter isn't just a planet. It's practically a mini solar system inside the solar system. It has 95 known moons, and among them are the four largest and best studied, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, the Galilean moons, discovered in 1610 by Galileo Galilei. Each one is a unique world. Io is the most volcanically active body in the solar system, a hellscape of eruptions and molten lava. Europa, on the other hand, is a frozen ocean covered by an ice crust, where scientists believe liquid water exists below the surface, and possibly even conditions for life. Ganymede is larger than the planet Mercury and has its own magnetic field. Callisto is an ancient, heavily cratered moon that holds secrets from billions of years of cosmic impacts. Reaching any one of them would be like visiting a new planet. So, how long would it actually take to get there? To get a sense, we can look at the probes that have already made the trip. The first to visit Jupiter was Pioneer 10, launched in 1972. It took about 21 months to cross space and fly by the planet. Then came Voyager 1 in 1977, which arrived in roughly 18 months. Years later, the Galileo spacecraft, launched in 1989, needed a full six years to enter orbit around Jupiter. And Juno, launched in 2011, also took five years to complete the journey. All of these missions used complex trajectories, taking advantage of gravity, assists from other planets like Venus and even Earth, to gain speed and save fuel. Even so, the trip was long and full of challenges. With today's technology, basically chemical rockets, a journey to Jupiter would take between four and six years, depending on the spacecraft, the chosen trajectory, and the launch window, that specific period when the planets are best aligned. If we send a smaller, lighter probe with a lower payload, the time can be slightly shorter. But if the goal is to carry something more robust, like a crewed mission, both time and risk multiply. Here's another important detail. To save fuel, spacecraft rarely fly in a straight line. They perform a real cosmic ballet using the gravitational fields of planets to gain speed, a maneuver called a gravity assist. It's like the probe using a planet as a slingshot. Juno, for example, left Earth in 2011 looped around the Sun and returned near Earth two years later in 2013 just to use our planet's gravity as a boost before finally heading to Jupiter. Without that maneuver, it wouldn't have had enough energy to get there. Travel time can vary a lot depending on the type of propulsion used. If we rely on conventional chemical rockets, we're limited by a balance among thrust, mass, and fuel. These engines deliver immediate force but they burn huge amounts of propellant, which makes spacecraft heavier. Alternative technologies, however, could change the picture. Ion engines and electric propulsion, for example, work with continuous acceleration. They're far more efficient, using less propellant, but they produce low thrust, 
which means slow acceleration. Missions like Dawn, which explored the asteroid Vesta and the dwarf planet Ceres, used this kind of propulsion. A spacecraft equipped with ion engines could take between seven and nine years to reach Jupiter. More time, but with much better fuel economy. The upside is that this propulsion is ideal for long missions that don't need to come back. Future technologies, like nuclear thermal or nuclear electric propulsion, promise to revolutionize interplanetary travel. With a nuclear reactor providing steady power to the engine, spacecraft could cruise much faster, bringing the trip down to two or three years to Jupiter's moons. NASA and DARPA are already developing prototypes of this propulsion, with test plans still within this decade. And if fusion propulsion ever becomes a reality, still a theoretical prospect, the travel time could drop to under a year, opening the door to crude exploration far beyond Mars. Even if we manage to shorten the trip, the challenges remain huge. The environment around Jupiter is one of the most hostile in the solar system. Radiation levels are thousands of times stronger than what we face on Earth. Any spacecraft approaching the planet needs heavy shielding and hardened electronics. On top of that, sunlight is much weaker at that distance. Only about 4% of what we receive here, which forces the use of nuclear power sources to keep systems running. There's also the communications challenge. A radio signal sent from Jupiter can take up to 45 minutes to reach Earth, making real-time control impossible. Everything needs to be handled autonomously. Among all of Jupiter's moons, Europa sparks the most interest. Beneath its icy crust, there may be a vast liquid ocean, warmed by internal heat. It's one of the most promising places to search for life beyond Earth. NASA has already sent the Europa Clipper mission, launched on October 14, 2024, and set to arrive in 2030, a journey of about six years. The probe will orbit Jupiter and perform dozens of flybys of Europa, studying the surface, the ice, and what lies beneath. It won't land, but it will give us the data needed so that, in the future, a bolder mission might drill through the ice and explore that mysterious ocean. And it's not just Europa. Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system, also stands out. It has its own magnetic field extremely rare for a moon, and it's believed to host a subsurface ocean even larger than Europa's. Io, with its constantly erupting volcanoes, showcases the power of Jupiter's gravitational forces. The moon is literally squeezed and heated by the gravity of the planet and the other moons. Callisto, in turn, is a kind of time capsule, an ancient moon packed with craters that tell the story of the solar system's first billions of years. Thinking that all these moons orbit the same planet is astonishing. It's as if Jupiter were a mini solar system, with completely different worlds circling it. If we ever managed to send a crewed ship there, it would be like exploring four planets in a single trip. For now, though, that's a distant dream. The cost, time, and risks make any crewed mission to Jupiter nearly impossible with current technology. Even so, probes keep bringing us step by step closer to these icy worlds. In the end, the answer to how long to Jupiter's moons depends on the spacecraft, the propulsion, and the mission's ambition. With conventional rockets, we'd be looking at four to six years. With future technologies, that could drop to two or three. And who knows? Far down the road, we might do it in less than one. Even if it takes a while, one thing is certain. Every probe launched, every byte of data transmitted, and every image captured brings us closer to one of the most fascinating destinations in the solar system. So, if you want to be here for the day, humanity finally lands on one of Jupiter's moons and maybe finds out we're not alone, subscribe to Today in the Space World and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.